What's up everybody? When you're on the road, it's kind of important, even more so these days, to be able to wash your hands. And it's very convenient to be able to do it in your own camper van so you don't have to go into a public place. That's why today we're gonna to be talking about camper van sinks or little sinks for your camper van that you can make at home. Now, I've talked about the one that I've built for myself in the past, but it's a little complicated and has a few extra bells and whistles that most people probably don't need. So I tried to come up with a super simple sink solution that it, that should be the title of the video. Simple sink solution. That's kind of fun to say. Anyway, it's a, a super simple idea that anybody can do for only less than $30. You can have a sink in your camper van and I think it's kind of cool. I'll tell you all about it in just a second. Stay tuned. This Frankensteinian monstrosity is what I use for a sink in my camper van. I took it out of the camper van and reassembled it here on my dining room table. For those of you who wanted to get a closer look at it, we're gonna go a little bit more in depth on what it is and how it works. It's actually pretty simple. Once you discard the Bluetooth feature and the built-in Wi-Fi and the fire extinguisher and toaster, 32 inch TV. Um, but other than that, it's actually pretty simple. It's not necessary to have a, a TV built in. And I put it on this TV monitor stand so it swivels, it spins around and rotates. And that's pretty cool. I've got this little table that I built. It's made from leftover countertop material from a few years ago when I redid my kitchen. But like the TV, it is also on a swivel. It swings out, so when I'm sitting in my van, this becomes a, a pretty handy table. It's a little awkward right now because it's not bolted down. As you can see, it's just black metal pipe that's uh, sort of screwed in there with these little uh, connector pieces. And it rotates, but not too much because it'll screw out of there. But since I only rotate it one quarter of the way around, that works. And then of course the sink. And here's one of those uh, little faucets that I keep talking about. One of the questions I get is how is this thing attached to this thing? And this of course is just a piano bench that I've hacked to pieces. So now it's just a little tiny thing, but it's actually not really attached. Not really. It's got a, um, let's see if we can peek under there. Yeah. No. So, this is the hose that goes through the countertop. So I drill a little hole and the hose comes up from the bottom. And underneath this thing, it's got this little, little thing that fits into the hose. And so I stick that on there and push it down and it pretty much stays in place. Down here, we've got my Bluetooth speaker and this little basket. The Bluetooth speaker it's not a real big deal, but it's super heavy. Hold on, let me put the camera down. So this thing is kind of heavy, but it should be. I think anything expensive should be heavy. But this is called the uh, Boomtastic Ultimate Ears or Hyper Boom or something, some kind of crazy name they've got for this thing. But it's a really good speaker. It'll keep a charge for 24 hours, that's 24 hours of use. So if you only use it an hour a day, it'll stay charged for almost a month and it doesn't take long to charge it and doesn't use much energy. So I think it's pretty good for having in a camper van and it's really, really loud. Next to that, we got my little basket here. This slides out a little bit before it gets hooked on this P-trap, but then you could just tilt it and pull it all the way out if you have to. And inside, I got my toaster. I also keep uh, some soap and a little hand towel in this basket. Underneath that, I've got a fire extinguisher. That comes out like so, in case of an emergency. I can put the fire out. That was a better look at the bottom without all that stuff in there. And then way over here in this corner, it's not enough light to see it, but there's a little hole that I drilled into the floor 
And that's where I put the bolt that connects this whole thing to the floor of the minivan. In my Pacifica, there's already a hole in the floor right there, so I didn't have to drill anything. And I just put that bolt through there and, and that seems to do the trick. Let's go around back. Back here is where I keep the tanks. This one here is for gray water and this is for my clean water. But uh, I run that hose in through here, slurp up the good water, and then the drain comes from underneath there and goes into this tank. And these two tanks fit. Like if you can imagine this thing is behind the passenger seat. So the back of the passenger seat goes this way and it makes this little triangular space back here. And these two jugs fit in that little space perfectly. This used to be where I had a power strip so I can plug in my laptop and speakers and stuff. But some viewers told me very politely that that was a dumb thing to do <laughs> because if I splash some water from the sink and it goes right into that power surge, it could be bad. And they're right. So it's gone. I'll have to come up with someplace else to put it. And there you have it. A closer look at my camper van sink. And I hope that has helped answer some of your questions. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Curtis, I came here looking for ideas on how to build a camper van sink. But that sink you've got there is just a little too simple. Do you have anything more complicated? Well, as a matter of fact, I just might. Hang on just a second while I pull in this transition. So I went on Amazon and picked up this automatic water dispenser or faucet if you want to be fancy. It ran me about 16 bucks and it's the second one that I've purchased. The first one worked out pretty well so I figured I'd get another one. Let's open it up and see what's inside. It's a fairly clever USB faucet that sits on top of a water jug. I think it's meant to go on top of a, a five gallon jug but uh, hopefully inside there's a, an adapter we can use for our one gallon jug. Okay, so uh, we got this little package here and it's got our rubber hose. This is the, uh, the, the spigot USB cable. Uh, let's take out the faucet itself. Okay, so there she is. Pretty simple device. It's got the hole on the bottom and then a button on top to turn it on and off. I don't think any instructions are really required with this thing. You got your spigot, you plug it in this little hole here. You got your hose, plug it in the bottom there. The kit should come with a little plastic piece that fits at the end of that rubber hose. And what that does is it prevents the hose from getting stuck on the bottom of the water tank and, and not working anymore. So this will, will help keep the flow of water flowing. What I have here is a plain old jug of water that I picked up at Meijer. This cost me a dollar and 49 cents and it comes with water already in it. And of course you can reuse the jug over and over. And uh, I can refill this for about 35 cents at my local grocery store. Now I'd recommend using one of these rather than rinsing out an old milk container because these are just going to last a lot longer. This particular one I've been using literally for years, taking it back and forth to the store, filling it and emptying it and refilling it again. So uh, I like its durability. I've also used this in the camper van to carry water around. So it's actually been rolling around in the back of the car a few times and it uh, still is not leaking. Let's open it up and install this water faucet. So like I said before, this other end of this hose, it goes in here. Let's see this thing in action. It just sticks on there. And when you're done with it and you're ready to put this thing away, I would recommend taking the faucet off and putting the cap back on. Okay, let's talk about the sink base. Let's move this out of the way and bring in the sink. All right. Now this fellow here, this is originally intended to be used as an oil catcher for when you're changing the oil in your car, you stick this underneath and the oil goes in here and then into a little hole. And then you can take this to your uh, auto parts store and have them recycle the oil. Cause fun fact, the oil you buy brand new is not actually brand new. It is most likely recycled oil. So we don't want to dump oil in the garbage because we reuse it. They clean it and they put it back in another car. Uh, 
Uh, so, but that means this is made from some pretty heavy duty stuff. I've researched a few of these things and I think this one's my favorite. It holds 16 quarts of water or oil, <laughs> whatever you want to put in it. Speaking of emptying it, it opens up here, this little cap, and then you can just dump the water out. This cap has a little rubber ring around it that tends to fall out on its own and you don't want to lose that. That will probably be one of my only critiques of this product. Uh, that rubber ring falls out too easily and it is important because without it, if you close this up and you have this laying down like this, especially if it's in a car and it's sloshing around, uh, dirty water is just going to leak out of there. So don't lose that little rubber thing. This is a little uh, vent doohickey. So if you're emptying it or filling it, you might have to vent it so that uh, so the air comes out as the water goes in. And it's got this little depression here and it's actually already at an angle. So all the water and anything you put in here flows down to this little drain, which has its own little cap because over time that water is going to get a little, little stinky. So you can put this cap over it and close it up and they've got two little holes there instead of one big hole because nuts and bolts drop down in here you can avoid having it go down into there but if that's not a concern of yours feel free to cut this out make it bigger but i don't think that's necessary because this isn't like a kitchen sink where you're going to fill it full of dishes and soapy water this is obviously more for people who are hanging out in their minivans and they don't have a lot of room for plumbing and so forth. So this is a great place to wash your hands, wash your face, brush your teeth, maybe uh, rinse a dish or two. This will work perfectly for that. And uh, one of the cool things about it is that once you uh, fill it full of water, you don't necessarily have to store it this way. You can take it off your table and you can store it like this and slide it in between the seats or, or however it is you want to store it. So it makes it a little bit more versatile. And, and that is really the whole story. So let me show you how it works. Just take your, uh, your little faucet here with a gallon of water and hang it as close to the edge as you can. And take this drain cap off and when you're ready to wash your hands you push a little button up here and there goes our water and it's all flowing right into that hole and this would be a great place to uh, wash your hands brush your teeth and the surface is really easy to clean there's a little bit of splashing but it doesn't seem to uh, go higher than these little walls Well, there you have it, um, little minivan sink. What's up everybody? It's your boy Curtis with Fantastic Pacifica and I'm back with a brand new van life video. Today, we are talking about camper van sink ideas. Best ideas for sinks in your camper van. Don't forget to annihilate that like button. And we are sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. And we... What? Oh, no, I, that's, that's the way YouTubers talk. I'm talking, cause I'm a, you, I, what? No, I just, Ladies and gentlemen, it has come to my attention that I am not permitted to talk like a YouTuber because I am a fully grown adult person and I would like to apologize for any harm my actions may have caused. I promise never to do it again. Thank you. How, how's that? Is that good? Oh. Furthermore, we are not, in fact, sponsored by or affiliated in any way with Raid Shadow Legend. I was just trying to be cool. <laughs>